So today I'm going to do the UK stocks I'm buying September 2023 edition. This is where I go through the stocks I've been buying and selling through the month of September from the 1st of August up to the 1st of September. And this is a monthly video series that I do on the channel every month and you guys can follow what I'm buying and selling. And I don't hide anything. If I bought anything or if I sold anything, it will be on this video series all the time. I've been doing it for, I think, nearly five, six years on the YouTube channel. So some of you guys might have been tracking for a long time on the stocks that I'm buying and selling and how they're doing. And just to let you know if it is your first time here and you watch my videos, I am a long-term investor. So all these stocks that you see me buying are going to be held for three, four, five years. Don't get me wrong, there's a couple of times where some might be sold out because something's changed fundamentally or the valuation just went absolutely crazy. And that might be where I do balance it out a little bit. But apart from that, it's mostly longer-term hold. So we'll go through these stocks and I hope you enjoyed the video. If, I, if you could just smash that like button for me, well, let's get started. And if you do want to support the channel, make sure you join the Patreon. It's only £5 a month and it helps me make these five videos a week on YouTube. If it wasn't for the Patreon members, we wouldn't be able to do this. And as a reward, I'll also treat you to two exclusive videos on the Patreon, like the stock request. This is where members can vote for me to take a look at a stock and I'll give my opinions on it. This week it was Samiro and as well as that, I'll let you know my buy and sell alerts in real time as well. And while you're at it, go get yourself some free shares on Trading 2 and 2 worth up to £100. But getting on to the selling to start off with, this is, look at this high tech image that we're using. I put some nice new intros on this video and then I go with these old kind of crappy photos. <laughs> Unbelievable, eh? Um, so what did I sell? So as most of you guys know, Moonpig. I did sell my shares in Moonpig. We took, I can't remember what it was now. I think it was around about 50% gain from Moonpig. Um, basically, I bought this. Basically, I timed it absolutely perfect. It never works like this, but I actually caught the bottom of the stock and I rode the wave up. Um, as the share price increased, it just went to incredibly low valuations. Moonpig, not my favorite company in the world. I just went, it's just incredibly too cheap. And uh, now it's trading back at 21 times earnings. They have a trading update coming up in a few weeks. And I thought, uh, I haven't built up a position size that I'd like. So I'm going to take my profit off the table from here. And we'll see what happens with the trading update. If it carries on going up, fair enough. If it does have a bit of a pullback, maybe I can buy some shares back into it. But yeah, it just went up a bit too much very quickly before I could build a position. And uh, the valuation looks more relatively fair for it so I did take my profit into Moonpig. I also sold Barclays uh, but saying that I only bought it again this month so I bought this stock I was looking at the banking stocks I was looking at the earnings they all looked incredibly strong I thought Barclays you know big recognizable brand obviously have a lot of um, international as well banking and I thought you know Barclays is surely going to be doing very well during this time period and I bought the stock and the earnings came out and I looked at the earnings and went they're not actually that good. So uh, I thought, you know what, my favorite thing to not own is, you know, banking stocks. I don't really enjoy owning them. And uh, at the time, PayPal was having a little bit of a dip as well. Uh, that was down a lot after their earnings. Um, obviously dropped a lot off their earnings, like 27%. And I needed some cash available. So I did buy Barclays, but I sold out very relatively quickly because I looked at the earnings. I was a bit disappointed that they weren't benefiting like some of the other banks. And uh, during that time frame, PayPal was dipping and I wanted some more cash to buy PayPal and uh, Barclays was one of the ones to get uh, chucked off uh, and the last one was watches of switzerland so as you guys know about this on friday uh, after i saw moonpig i put that money into watches of switzerland they basically had a drop off because rolex bought another retailer everyone panicked and thought rolex were going to go directly with them rather than with watches of switzerland the share price absolutely created off the news and uh, i thought you know what that's a little bit of an overreaction i uh, bought the dip and obviously the shares have rallied up from that time frame could have argued that the stock potentially could be on a little bit more of a rally up than this and maybe I could have got still be holding it now and maybe get higher returns in the future but for me it was job done I made some nice little quick money and I'll hold that cash for to maybe buy some other opportunities so buying let's get on to the buying what's going on so money supermarket I did buy some more shares in money supermarket I have been waiting for this one to have a little bit of a dip and it keeps every so often you know it did have a little bit of a dip as you can see a bit about a 12% dip and I thought okay let's just nibble some shares here now because I, I would really like money supermarket to be in a middle sized position in my portfolio which does mean buying a few more shares so if I can never nibble it on a dip I will do and obviously I did take advantage of that little dip that you see there it is breaking into a bit of an uptrend as you can see here at the moment uh, 1 billion 1.3 billion market cap 17 times earnings which isn't too bad uh, you do pick up nearly 5% dividend yield which is also attractive because I think you'll get some share price appreciation and while collecting a lovely 5% dividend yield most of you guys will probably know comparison sites our money supermarket is a comparison site as well as owning 
money saving expert of Martin Lewis as well. Uh, they do car insurance, which a lot of the premiums have been hiked up recently. Credit cards, which obviously you'd expect to do quite well in the environment that we're in at the moment. Home, home insurance, loans, once again, you'd expect to see a bit of a bump up in the money part of the business. Uh, travel insurance, which has been recovered really well since the CV situation. Mortgage deals, which may be a little bit more quieter. Mobile phones, life insurance, pet insurance, bro run deals. Um, obviously the big thing energy market obviously that's been shut down and that's still to come back in and that's one of the big things that I'm kind of buying is the, uh, the return of the energy market but even without the return of the energy market the company's been doing very well if we go on to the accounts here that ended 2022 you can see here the insurance was up 8% very steady money starting to show very popular obviously people looking for higher interest rates potentially loans that was up 37% Home services, which includes the energy business, you can see here that's down 42%. So you've still got around about 20 million in the energy market to return whenever that does come back online. Travel insurance has obviously boomed since the CV times, so that's shown a good recovery. And then the cash back, which is the new acquisition that they've made. And obviously showing a great, fantastic growth, as you can see here. And obviously the big thing is the, since if you go on the past performance, you can see here the uh, historically a very good track record business. Just look at that profit and revenue growth. Obviously, people are going to be more eager than ever to go compare prices right now with you know the fears of the tightening spend going on and uh, obviously you can see here they had the dip because of the uh, holiday situation not being able to get travel insurance then we had the energy market situation uh, but you can see here even though with all them things considered obviously travels come back and revenue is actually higher than before cv times and you can see the profitability is starting to get closer to where it was before the cv times as well obviously you add on top the energy market's probably going to come back in the next 12 months obviously that's another 20 plus million ish you could add probably on the top and bottom line so that's gonna be absolutely fantastic when that sort of happens and i think then when you start looking at the future growth of it obviously you start thinking well if they can grow 10 plus percent or just sh short of 10 plus percent a year they grow that top bottom line as well at 10 plus percent a year you know you start talking in the next few years the reason they're going to be pushing 100 plus million in profitability that's not too bad at 13 times earnings for a company that has this profit growth this revenue growth great track record great profit margins uh, you know you look at the financial health of the business as well pretty steady you know there's not much to get on there you think dividend wise it's going to obviously it's generating more and more profit you know you're expecting that dividend to be hiked up more and more you're already collecting a four four or five percent dividend yields you know you expect that to go towards more six percentage six percentage six percent more in the like next couple of years as well so i think you've got you know great growth great track record good profit growth dividends is going to get hiked up as well which is lovely and um, you look at the insiders obviously when the share price was dipping massively you know insiders were queuing up to uh, buy shares of this you know you look at the chairman of the board the ceo was picking up some shares chairman of the board again uh, ceo picked some shares you know they were all picking it up in that you know one pound two pound range now obviously what I'll say is the share price has, uh, you know, since then, you know, put a bit of a bottom in and has rallied up. But relatively, you know, looking at the company, it's still a fabulous company. It's not that bad of a valuation. So, yeah, I think this is just a really nice holding for me to pick up as a mid-sized position. So I've been picking up some shares in Money Supermarket. And also in the recent update, they said that they are going to be towards the upper end of the market expectations for this year, which is always lovely to hear your management team saying them words. So next one's Hollywood Bowl. So Hollywood Bowl, same again, a uh, company I love. Uh, I've, I've owned this stock for three, four years now. And whenever the company has a dip, I buy up the shares and uh, yeah, I've started buying in the, the you know the old CV times. So yeah, just around three and a half years ish, I guess now. And uh, I bought the company. I, I could have held the shares and be up a lot more, but I just average up on this one because I think it's a fantastic company. And it does every so often have a few dips. And when it does have them dips, I try and nibble the shares. And you'll see here. As we entered into August towards September, we did start to see the dip in the shares around the middle of August and I picked up some shares in the company. Now it has had a little bit of a bounce up since then, uh, but I did take this advantage to nibble some shares because I thought this drop was a little bit overdone. Uh, the P ratio is 12, obviously it dropped even lower when it was having that dip. And you do pick up a dividend yield of 5%, once again, lovely amount of dividend there. Hold ball, obviously most of you guys will know, operates the bowling alleys. These are in great locations where you might go bowling. You might also get some food and drink and they also have the amusements as well. So it's basically free income sources to have, not just the bowling alleys. So even if you go to say somewhere to eat or the cinema, normally nearby is the Hollywood Bowl and you might go, okay, we've gone to the cinema. Fancy going to get a drink now or get some quick food or going for a game of bowling, which 
works very well. They've also expanded into Put Stars, which is also a mini golf, as you can see here. And also they're now expanding into Canada. So they have seen the market in Canada being fragmented and there isn't really one major player. Obviously in the UK, you look at Hollywood Ball, they are the major bowling player in the UK. Probably you'd say, is it 10, 10 pin? Is it 10? It's 10 something is probably the, the second player in this space in the UK. But uh, there's no big market share in the, in the Canadian space. So they think, okay, let's go to Canada. We'll buy a couple of locations up in Canada and we'll do what we did in the UK over in Canada. And that looks really exciting for the business and will be the growth drivers going forward. Looking at the recent results, they looked pretty good. If you take out the VAT benefit, um, you can see here revenue was up 20%, gross profit 17%. The gross profit margins was down a little bit. Obviously, you've got a few cost expenses that came on last year obviously inflation went a little bit crazy wage growth um, a few of the products in general went a little bit crazy and um, but EBITDA was up so yeah um, it looks pretty nice on the number side of it and the calendar expansion looks pretty good they've been working on a few things like installing solar panels to manage energy costs strings on pins so the isn't as many faults when they don't have to employ any engineers at every location. Obviously, that's going to send it, save them a good 30, 40 grand a year, uh, which is good. So that looks absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously, you know, apart from the CV situation where there was uh, a big dip in the profit and revenue uh, that you can see here, um, obviously very good track record, record as you can see here. Financially now, you know, obviously they're higher than where they were before the CV situation and that should continue with the growth of Canada. Financial health wise, lovely company as well. You know, there's no, they used to have a bit of debt on there and uh, they've, they've paid it all down now, which is absolutely fantastic. Dividend, obviously, you know, 5% dividend yield, which is great. I would expect them to maybe hike that dividend up a little bit more going forward. And inside the front, I think the management team is good obviously there's, there's a little bit of a sale here but before this the uh, management team were loading up shares as well which is fantastic so i like that so uh, that's hollywood ball next one bobico group or national express <laughs> so yeah we're going to put up that horrible name change but yeah this is um i've got to say before i do talk about national express or mobico group I've got to say, like, I remember during this time frame where this stock drops in the CV dip and I was buying up some shares and then it had another drop down here. You know, I bought this stock uh, on the first dip and, the, the, you know, I was up over 100% on this stock and uh, I was, you know, selling some profit out of the stock and everybody's like, oh, I wish I could buy some more National Express. And then it dived again in the summer of 2020 and then I was buying some more shares and it rallied up and then I sold it out again for, uh, I was trimmed some shares again for 100% profit and everybody was like, oh, I wish National Express would have a bit of a dip. And then all of a sudden the stock then has a dip and the dip is actually now lower than where it was in the CV times or the summer of 2020. And it makes, it, it does make me laugh, like the sentiment around the share price, like when it was this, when it was this high, everyone went, oh yeah, it's a good, it's this good steady company, National Express. And then whenever the fear comes of the share price, you know, sheer fear is the biggest dictator of the sentiment around the stock. It's unbelievable. And all of a sudden now it's like a terrible stock because it's down at these sort of levels. It, it, it does make me laugh at how share prices move and the sentiment changes, you know. The amount of times I, you know, see on the comps like, oh, you bought National Express and it's down so much, like, it makes me laugh because those people were very quiet when I was up over 100% taking the profit out 100%. But hey, you know, it, it just shows you the emotion around the share prices. But anyway, getting back to the point, that's going to be off topic. So National Express, obviously the stock seemed to peak around 2021 uh, and it's fallen massively since that time frame. It does pay around an 8% dividend yield, which is massive. A few questions around the dividend yield in the longer term, but it seems like it's okay at the moment. Now, if you do look at the recent accounts, or actually before we look at the recent accounts, people don't actually realise this why they've changed the name from National Express to Mobico Group. It's to reflect all the business they do everywhere around the world. And I think some people don't realise you just see this coach company in the UK and you don't realise that they're you know, operating in Spain, they're operating in the US, they're operating in Portugal, Switzerland and France, you know, they run the rail service in Germany, Bahrain, Canada, Morocco, there's so many parts of the uh, world that they're operating in now, it's, it's crazy. Um, also, people think it's very cheap to buy buses and trains, which always surprises me as well. But um, yeah, if you look at the half year results, they were absolutely uh, fantastic from revenue growth point of view. You can see here that operating profit was affected because of some funding and then inflationary costs as well hit their profitability. But the revenue was okay. Revenue was growing at um, 18.5%. Now, the big thing is the profitability didn't match the revenue. So revenue will grow for good, but the profitability didn't get dragged up. So they actually made a loss. As you 
can see here now basically national express basically came out and said oh the reason why we made a loss is because we couldn't get the price increases and the cost reduction in quick enough so they're saying by the back end of the year we'll get this in and we'll actually make operating profit to be 200 215 million and you'll actually see the benefit now what seems to have happened is the market's gone we don't believe you and that's why they've sent the stock so low but obviously if the market if, if the company does do what they say they're going to do you know this company looks incredibly cheap um when you look from a point of view that they're going to do probably EBITDA around 200 million free cash flow they're doing around 80 million in half one you know you're going to be talking about a company that's operating four times free cash flow around about two and a half times three times EBITDA that's very cheap you know that's sort of the levels you start talking about bankruptcy for you and obviously if they do get them levels of profitability then that's where the risk of the dividend isn't really a risk of a dividend so clearly the market's gone we don't believe you and if you believe the company then obviously you think this is a you know a really good opportunity so that's what it all kind of comes down to is do you believe the market or do you believe what the company is telling you so we'll see in six months who was right was the market right or was the company right but uh, looking at the company's point of view they do relatively have a good track record as you can see here you know revenue has been very consistent growth profitability has increased massively you know 2014 you're talking 56 million up to 70 million up to 112 million uh, before the cv times or even doing 141 million in profitability you know if they get to them old levels of profitability uh you know 141 million ish you're talking the company to trade at three times earnings which is incredibly cheap obviously it might take a while to get back up to them levels of profitability but just show you how low it's kind of gone here so they do need to obviously the revenue is higher than where it was before the cv they just need to manage the the cost a little bit more which they are said they, that's what they are trying to do at the moment i guess a little bit of stick for the balance sheet i don't think the balance sheet is that bad it's not cheap buying trains it's not cheap buying buses obviously it does have a bit of debt on there which is a, maybe a bit of an issue going into a higher interest rate environment but if you were sitting, if you weren't sitting on 356 million of cash, maybe it is a, a problem then. But you know, 356 million of cash is enough to last them for a for a little bit of a downturn for a couple more years yet. So I won't worry about that. Um, on the insider front, the insiders are loving it. <laughs> if you look down here. Chairman of the board, I mean, obviously, I mean, what's the stock trading at now? So the stock's trading at 85p. If you look here, um, the chairman of the board was picking up at £1.58. You've got the CLO, £1.06. Chairman of the board again at £1.07. CEO was buying at £1.08. Uh, you've got the CFO and director, James Stamp buying at one pound and eight p you've got a just another member of the board there and you can see the clo picked some more shares up only about two one week ago two weeks ago at 76p you know it's clear the insiders and big parts of the company are obviously looking at the uh, you know when the cfo's buying you know they must be confident they're going to turn these financials around so i mean it goes down to you know do you believe wall you know do you believe wall street and investors are you looking at going i believe the investor team and you know what they've done is you know we're going to turn these financials around by increasing prices and you'll see that by the back end of the year and you know a ton of them including the cfo has been buying up shares before that time frame i mean i just you know who, who do you want to believe there obviously i'm believing you know national express but I'm, i'll leave that one down to you to decide Next one, Flutter. So I did buy some more shares in Flutter. It had a little bit of dip through August, as a lot of stocks did actually dip through August, but Flutter dipped through August. Since then, the stock has rallied out that low since I did buy the stock, um, which is fair enough. Um, I, I did take advantage of the dip. And the reason why it seemed to dip is due to the ESPN deal. So I've covered this with DraftKings. So they basically, ESPN basically said, you know, they're going to, partner with Pin National and they're going to enter the the online betting space in US and that caused DraftKings to drop, it caused Flutter to drop and I didn't think it was that major an issue and clearly people have now started buying up on that news um, but in case you don't know, Flutter, they own Fanjul. Fanjul is one of the big players in the US if you don't know and you've never seen, I've talked about this a lot because of DraftKings but the basically online has, uh, the US has only just allowed online sports betting and it's an absolute boom, it's absolutely booming at the moment. Uh, they own Fanjul which is the other big competitor to DraftKings which I also own DraftKings and between Fanjul and Flutter they own a big chunk of the US online sports betting. So you can see here that in Indiana uh, FanDuel own 46% of the gross gaming revenue and you see here DraftKings own 32% so between FanDuel and DraftKings you know they own basically 80% of the online sports betting in America at the moment which is absolutely, absolutely crazy so I own a big chunk of one of them but I wanted to own a big chunk of the other one and that's why I'm buying Flutter. Flutter is a little bit different obviously though um, 
which we'll look at in a second. But you know, they've become that dominant dominant now that they're like knocking WinBet out. You know, WinBet are leaving because you know they've been dominated by DraftKings and Flutter, which is impressive. Uh, a little bit different though because it's got obviously the more UK parts of the company as well, which obviously help generate more profitability than say something like a DraftKings, which is a little bit different. But because the growth of the US is growing faster and faster and faster and getting bigger, a bigger part of the pie for Flutter, the growth is also very good. So you can see, uh, you know, group revenue was up 42%. The EBITDA now is starting to ramp up, up 76%. The profit after tax is starting to move from uh, negative to po positive. You know, you've got this stable UK company that's growing, uh, you know, decent. But then you've got the, the US with, you know, revenue growing 63%. And that's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, that's going to make, you know, that's going to make the growth very good. But they're going to ramp profitability up as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there is a US listing as well coming in Q3, Q4 of 2023 or Q1 2024. Hopefully people are looking and going, well, I want to buy DraftKings or I want to buy Fangio. Hopefully that gets some US investors, US investors into the company as well. Um, but yeah, obviously the company has a very good track record. You can see the growth explosion from the US in the last couple of years. And if you look at the past performance before the US came online, you can see the company was doing pretty steady. Um, historically, it had around about an 10%, 8%, I mean, even touched 12% at one point, 16%, uh, 15% profit margins. So, I mean, obviously, if they can grow, you know, 10, 20 plus percent a year because of the US part, but then also command, you know, profit margins of 10 plus percent, that's where it comes uh, very interesting in the long term. And I think people are sleeping on this a little bit, you know, a bit like DraftKings, they don't realize how good that US part is going to be uh, for online sports betting. And I think, I, you know, I wanted to own, as I have DraftKings in one portfolio, I wanted to have a bit of Flutter in the other portfolio. And the last one is Aviva. So I've been buying a few shares in Aviva. Now, realistically, there's not much difference between Aviva and Legal in general. They both move very similar. So uh, both I have legal in general as a bit of a mid-sized position. I wanted another legal in general in there that's not legal in general, so I got Aviva. Two steady companies that I think are having a bit of a tough time on the share price that will come back sometime soon, but also paying you a good dividend, as you can see, an 8% dividend yield. Um, stock got created in the CV times, did rally up out of the CV times, as you can see here, and now it's getting close to the levels it was at the CV times. If we go back to that little pop-up in you know June time, it's about level there, not as so much as the, the big fear times. It's up a little bit from there, but... Shows you how much it's being beaten down. Um, seems to be beaten down very similar to like the likes of legal in general. There seems to just be a risk around potentially the fears of recession, um, especially like uh, housing and um, properties as well. Exposure to properties, uh, you know, the banking situation. Just seems like a lot of them fears are being beating the, she the share price up a little bit when really financially they've actually been doing really well. And don't, a bit of a disconnect there. It seems like there's a bit too much fear there for me for how much that share price is beating up and then you look at the financials. Um, obviously, car insurance, home insurance, life insurance, pensions, investments, healthcare insurance. When you do look at the recent accounts, they've been pretty good. That's what I said. Uh, group operating profit up 8%. Solvency as well. Own funds generation up 26%. Interim dividend hiked up 8% as well. All parts of the business were looking good. Uh, obviously, insurance premiums went up a little bit, covering inflation, uh, which is good, up 13% as well. Uh, the Canadian business seemed pretty well. All the parts of the business, when you go through this energy report, you'll see that most parts of the businesses were showing really good signs of growth and the dividend was going up. You know, they're still trying to return the cash to shareholders, pay down some of the debt that they have, buy back a few shares. It looks very good from a point of view, from the financial point of view. Uh, like I said, you know, it's trading, tr trading, uh, you know, relatively low, obviously big spike up there. Um, but, you know, normally around 10, 11 times earnings. Uh, and at the moment it is, I think around about eight times earnings, I think it is or nine times earnings. So it's a relatively a little bit low to what it normally is. But the big thing is the dividend, you know, as long as they can keep generating constant revenue and profitability, which they should do with, you know, a lot of them being premiums, you know, it should be all right. Uh, financial health point of view, obviously, they've sold a couple of parts of the business, but in, in the paying down the debt, which is obviously really good to see as well. And uh, they do sit on cash and short term uh, investments of 12.8 billion as well, as you can see here. Uh, from the dividend point of view, like I said, you know, got a history of hiking up that dividend and they're focused on, you know, keeping paying that dividend as well, which obviously should be uh, good to see. And from an insider point of view, you know, even the insiders have started buying up quite a good amount of shares, you know, so you got CEO buying up some shares there. Last week, you know, the CEO bought another uh, ton of shares, you know, around about 124K. Uh, actually, there was some buy here from a director and a member of the board. So um, if you take that out, yeah, it'd been just short of 100K, which is still a fair chunk, which is obviously 
obviously really good to see so yeah that's just a very simple kind of don't think you'll go too crazy on the share price you know maybe a good five ten percent a year which is still good but then you top up a you know an eight percent dividend yield that i think will keep getting hyped up i think it's uh, quite attractive anyway so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, get asked us ask the questions all the time about this platform that i'm using in the video it's simple wall street you can join through the link in the description i think if you join through that link in the description you get a 14 day trial to give it a go and i also think you get 40 percent off if you actually buy through that link so it's pretty good going but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video anyway guys and uh, the stocks that i'm buying let me know what you bought in the comment section as always and i'll see you all in a bit